My name is Abigail Savage. I'm a mother, I'm a performer. With the pandemic, it was frustrating and scary. I remember I worked in a bar at the time, I'm like, the last thing that's gonna be shut down is like bars and restaurants. And then within the week is when everything shut down. Um, I had never had to be on unemployment before. I had nowhere to go and I don't have any family here. And I figured the best option would be just to ask if I could have just like a month. And that's something I've never done before either. And I asked over the phone. He was like, not a problem. And then the next day I get a text message from him asking essentially like, where's the rent money? And I reiterated that we just had a phone conversation about it the day before. And I was under the impression because he blatantly said that I could have the month and just pay double the next month. He had asked me if I wanted to come over to his house, which I thought was very strange. And I wasn't entirely sure what he meant and I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I asked him what he meant by it. And he basically said, oh, if you don't want to, I, I get it. And at this point I was like getting like hot, like agitated, like I was having a physical reaction to it. I was like, I feel like this is what's going on and I, I can't believe it, but I need to know for sure. So I, I asked directly, are you asking me in a sexual way? And he answered yes. So that was his intention. At one point that it essentially implied if I cared about my son and him having a safe space that I would do what he wanted me to do. And so I just picked up my son and just walked out the door and I was like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what to do. And then I called one of my near and dear friends and she just like snatched us up and we just drove around and we're like, okay, what do we do? How do we figure this out? Because this is not okay. And uh, we decided to call the Fair Housing Center. Fair Housing Center of Central Indiana and many organizations across the country are specifically trained for dealing with housing discrimination and uncovering evidence um, for victims to help prove their cases. So we can get away from victim shaming or blaming, um, especially in sexual harassment situations. Any type of harassment is unlawful under the Federal Fair Housing Act, whether that be race-based, uh, national origin-based, disability-based, but specifically in Gail's case, we found that it was gender-based. And so ultimately she did decide and wanted to pursue litigation. And so we helped her with the investigation. We also connected her with an attorney that was very specialized in fair housing litigation. And we kind of educated her throughout the entire process. She was never left in the dark. I was afraid that like something was gonna be done that I wasn't gonna be that I wasn't aware of or something would be done that I didn't want to happen and it was never the case. I was kept up to date with everything. I felt very well taken care of. So the results of Gail's case, ultimately uh, we did settle her case in the same year. We did reach uh, what was, what's called a consent decree where we did reach monetary damages as well as um, attorney's fees, as well as some injunctive relief. The landlord or the housing provider did ultimately remove himself from the property management side of things. Um, so he had no interactions with any future tenants of any sort or any residents. Um, and we also had required some fair housing training as well, which is very common in, in fair housing settlements. One thing that I really admired about Gail um, was was her courage to speak up. Unfortunately, I interact with a lot of victims of sexual harassment and there's so many fears of retaliation or losing their housing. I applaud Gail and her bravery for coming forward and stepping and standing up for what's right. Um, we need a lot more people to come forward and speak what's been happening to them. For anyone else who's experienced something like this, and I hate that it's happening to anyone, but I unfortunately this is how the world works and it's what's happening, please say something. Uh, even if you feel like you don't have anyone or you're embarrassed, I felt that too, and I still sometimes do. Like, it's, em it's embarrassing, even though you've done nothing wrong, but you don't have to put up with that at all. No one does, no one deserves it. Take care of yourself.